Hey guys, welcome back to The Horde, The Horror with your hostess with the mostest, Jenna Bell, as always. Welcome back. I always enjoy you guys come check me out. So today what we are doing is our next episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, which is The Hungry Hounds, The Tale of the Hungry Hounds. Uh, so The Tale of the Hungry Hounds, a uh, pretty uh, protocolish of a uh, cousin gets dropped off at her cousin's house, is spending a couple weeks of summer there and everything, and of course it's the Are You Afraid of the Dark universe, so some shenanigans is going to ensue. So basically it's uh, sort of like a ghost story, but not quite like the lonely ghost uh, story. This one is more of a, a haunted artifact that sort of takes possession, so to speak, of one of the girls, and they go and, like, figure out what happened in, like, the past, like, 30 years before. Um, it's, it's a decent little episode. I feel like it's one of the weaker episodes. I still enjoy watching it. I still watch it every once in a while, not as often as some of the other episodes that I truly, truly love. But it's also not, like, the weakest episode of the series. There's, I feel like there's other ones that are much, much weaker than this. Uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a decent story. Uh, this is one I feel like I would have liked to have seen maybe be done as, like, a two-parter. I feel like they could have done a little more with the story if it was a two-parter. Or even do, like, a little... Uh, maybe even like a TV movie out of this story just because there is something about it that is fun. Uh, you know, especially to like one of those like haunted art, uh, uh, I almost said haunted, haunted arteries. And uh, yeah, no, I don't even want to think about how that would happen. But no, it's, it's, uh, you know, the story itself, I do kind of like those sort of haunted or cursed artifacts or clothing where you put you know, something on, and you then pretty much get possessed by, you know, someone else's ghost. Like, I feel like those type of possession type movies or shows would make more of a, an appearance these days, because I'm kind of over the whole, like, possession type stuff that we have now, but I digress. I digress. No, but it's, it's a fun little one, and I know this is not the first, or this is not the only story that has that where it's like a sort of like a cursed article of clothing. I know there's at least one other one uh, that I'm thinking off the top of my head, um, that locker story or whatever, the locker of 22 or something. I know that one, that episode kind of has the same sort of premise. Uh, that was a better story though, but I'll discuss that one when I get to it uh, in the next season or two. But uh, Tale of the Hungry Hounds, like I said, it's, it's a decent one. It's enjoyable. Uh, and it's funny because uh, come with a couple of the scenes, like, at one point the girls uh, break out this, like, this Ouija board. And it's funny because I'm, like, the little uh, centerpiece or whatever that you put your fingers on. Like, they put, like, a piece of, like, cloth or something over it so you can't like see through the uh the little hole or whatever I guess they were just kind of like protecting themselves obviously someone it was either for sort of like copyright issues because they couldn't actually use like the legit Ouija board piece or I'm thinking the other reason might be is someone on the set or multiple multiple people on the set had too much respect for the Ouija board that they're like we are not bringing any spirits into the world. We don't want to, we don't want to do that. So we're going to respect it. Uh, but whatever, whatever. Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's a good one. Uh, another scene though, too, that I was going to bring up that I always kind of get a chuckle with is towards the end. Uh, Cause the, the, one of the ghosts or whatever, or like the spirit or one of the family members uh, was killed because obviously because of the hungry hounds, she didn't feed the dogs or something. And so like the girls are like, kind of like living through that moment. So, like, the dogs, you know, they're in the bar and the dogs are coming, are trying to break through, and they finally break through the door. And the girls, the one girl who is not possessed is, like, running. She's trying to get, like, to safer ground. And it's funny because it's, like, the dogs come in here expecting, like, these big, huge dogs, like St. Bernard's or something. There were a bunch of beagles. Like, seriously, like, my dog's part beagle, and even when he gets into his crazy Cujo mode, I'm not even that scared of him. Like, seriously, 
Uh, but I mean, it's it's a little Nickelodeon show. It's a little kids show, so I'm not gonna totally nitpick it for that. It is what it is. But yeah, so Hungry Hounds, the Tale of the Hungry Hounds, decent little episode. I would say probably uh, if I had to rate this episode, I'd say it's a bit like a, I'd say it's middle road, five out of ten, uh, maybe six out of the ten out of ten out of the highest. Like I said, it's it's one of like the weaker ones for me, one of the weaker episodes, but it's still enjoyable. I will play it every so often. I'll pop it in and watch that episode every once in a while. But certainly, like I said, not my, my not my absolute favors favorite, and it's definitely not the weakest episode of the series. But whatever. But let me know what you guys think of the episode of the Hungry Hounds, the Tale of the Hungry Hounds. Uh, but till next time, you guys, till next week, stay creepy, classy, and a little bit sassy.